Hi everybody, I'm Professor Victoria Ferrer and we're going to do a lesson today looking at a work of art from the Metropolitan Museum. The Met is one of my favorite places in New York City and it's free for New York residents. You can visit it when it reopens, but in the meantime, they have a fantastic website. Before we get started, let's gather some materials. For this project, you'll need a sheet of paper, crayons, I like to peel the wrappers off of mine, colored pencils, and a ruler or other straight edge. If you don't have a ruler, you can use the side of a notebook. Let's get back to the Mets website and take a look at one of the beautiful pieces in their collection. This is the study of a bird by Riza Yiyabasi, and it's a Persian painting, and it was painted in 1634, so it's pretty old. It is almost 400 years old. What do you notice about this work of art? What do you think the artist was trying to show us? And what are the clues that tell you that? You can pause here and take a look for a few moments while you make observations. This work of art has a frame drawn around it. So we have our rectangular piece of paper and then we've got a triple frame. But it is really interesting that the ground breaks through that frame. So what else do you notice? The tree branches to me look like they're very carefully observed, right? The branches look super realistic. But maybe the leaves start to be a little more fanciful. The leaves are starting to change in this picture, so maybe it's the very end of summer, starting to become autumn, because most of our leaves are green, but then we do have a few yellow and red ones. There's also, I think, some tulips that are slanting in the lower right of the picture. That might be telling us something about the weather as well. I think it is pretty windy, and actually, if I zoom in, you can see that in the background, we have some very light drawing in gold that looks to be the wind moving in the background. The way that the strokes in the wind pattern really echo the calligraphy that's on the side. Definitely the bird is a lot more detailed than the background. So there's a few things that this artist used to show us what was in front and what is behind. So one of the things is the objects that are closer to us are rendered with much more detail, right? And the objects that are further away are rendered more loosely, a little bit more abstract. We also have some overlapping. So we can tell that the bird's left foot is in front because we see that entire foot, but the bird's right foot is behind the rock, right? So the rock is overlapping on top of it. We are going to draw our own bird today following the um, style and ingredients that we saw in this piece. So this bird is a nightingale and we can draw any bird that we like. Um, we want to make sure that we draw a border and that we draw the bird really big and then we show some of the environment that the bird is in and that we also show um, some background and we want to use different types of lines. So we call those different types of lines different weights. So I'm going to show you a website where we can actually see a lot of pictures of birds. This website is from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology and ornithology is the study of birds. I think I want to draw one of those uh, doves that I see outside of my window. There, oh, so cute. Actually, there was a family that built a nest outside of my house. We had a hanging planter right in front of our door and a family of morning doves came and built a nest in it and had eggs and there were two little babies there. And it was really, really cute. I am going to draw one of these. I'm going to show you how I make my own study of a bird. Watch my demonstration first, and then you can go on the All About Birds website and choose your own bird to draw. To draw a border, I find that one of the easiest ways to start is to draw a dot in each corner. 
and you want your dot to be the same distance on each of those corners. So one way I can measure is using my finger. If you have a ruler, you can connect these using the ruler. Another thing you can do, you can use the edge of a notebook. So the artist we were inspired by today had multiple borders. So we can add as many as we'd like to our piece. I've got some crayons that I've peeled the wrappers off. So usually when you purchase crayons, they come in a box like this and they've got wrappers that show you what color they are. Um, Thing is though, I like to use the side of the crayon sometimes when I'm drawing. So I take these and I put them in a bowl of warm water and soap. And after about 10 minutes, you can peel the wrappers off really easily. And then you've got peeled crayons that you can use sideways. So I've actually got a whole bag of these. So I'm gonna start choosing crayon colors to draw the body of my bird. And I want to break it down into basic shapes so that I can draw it more easily. Whenever I'm drawing a round shape, I like to first practice it in the air so I know it's the right size. So I usually say to myself quietly, practice, 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 draw. And that way I knew what size I wanted my shape and where it was going to go. So now that I've got my bird's body, I think I need to add its head. And its head is probably going to be a circle. So again, I'll practice, 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 draw. And then I can connect with a little neck and I can start to get a little bit darker as I'm feeling more confident with where my shapes go. And I think I will start with the wings now. So let's see, we're gonna have a little wing like that and it's gonna peek out of it and come to this side. And then we're gonna have its tail. So I know that its tail should be following the line of its back. So I'm actually going to kind of trace that without touching down and then draw its tail over here. Right? So what things am I missing? Oh, we don't even have a beak or an eye yet. So I'm looking at a picture of a morning dove, but also remembering what it looks like. And I remember that its beak kind of comes down a little bit. All right. And its eye. And now I think I need its legs as well. So just like the artwork that we looked at, I want to have one leg in front and one leg is going to be in back. put some more detail on the feathers. So I did do an overlap here. So the way you do an overlap in drawing is you draw the thing that's in front and then when you fill in the background you skip the part that you want to be overlapped but you have to kind of draw it in the air so you know that it's on the right place when you come out the other side. His head looks a little lumpy doesn't it? We should fix that. One of the things that I want to do is the texture of the feathers. So you can go in and use different markings. Oh, I'm starting to add in a little baby tree, small sprout on the side. The piano music that's playing while I draw was composed by Frédéric Chopin. When I was younger, I used to visit my family in the town of Aydemosa on the island of Mallorca in Spain. Chopin had once lived there, so every summer they'd fill the town with the sounds of his music.
for grass since I want it to look fresh and young because it's springtime and the grass is just starting, I'm gonna use quick strokes that come up at the end and that way the grass is forming a little point. drawing that we looked at there was actually a bit of the rock that came in front so I thought that was a really fun touch that kind of broke out of the tradition of the frame and did something new drawing we looked at it had some swirls of color in the background done with the gold calligraphy ink and I think I'm actually gonna do mine in pink to try to give a little more of like a springtime feel maybe there are some cherry blossoms or magnolia trees starting to bloom in the background Before you decide that you're totally done, you want to hold your paper out in front of you so you can see it at a distance, because that's the distance that people are usually going to look at it. We tend to draw much closer to our papers than people actually look at them. So you want to hold it out and say to yourself, are there any finishing touches that it needs? And then you're ready to sign it. This is my finished drawing, a study of a morning dove. I hope you like it. Now it's your turn. Take another look at Rizagi Abbasi's painting for inspiration, and then choose a bird to draw for your study from allaboutbirds.org. I can't wait to see the beautiful drawings that you create. Thank you everybody so much for making art with me, and I'll see you soon.